Hello and welcome to Food City Center where Tennessee just won their second game over Vanderbilt this season, this time in absolutely dominating fashion. I'm Ryan Sylvia, this is Noah Taylor, we're with BarReport.com on the Rivals Network. And your final score here from Knoxville, Tennessee 88, Vanderbilt 53. Lopsided score, 35 point win, still doesn't feel like it tells the whole story. Let's start in the first half. Tennessee goes into the halftime break due to a Santiago Vescovi three-pointer with a 31-point lead. You flash back to Nashville where Tennessee played Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt led by five in that game. 36-point differential in first halves between the two games. Back half of the game, Tennessee goes up about 40 points and just kind of coast to victory from there, getting some reserves and getting some freshmen and even walk-ons by the end of the game. But what, what were your thoughts on that first half? Absolutely dominating stuff in the balls. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it, polar opposite from what happened just three weeks ago in Nashville. It, it, you know, it, it just didn't really seem close ever. You know, Tennessee, I think Josiah Jordan James uh, comes down, or maybe don't connect, I'm sorry, comes down, hits a three mm -hmm. on Tennessee's opening possession. Yeah. And then, you know, Tyron Lawrence comes down, does the same thing. It's three to three. You're thinking maybe in that moment, because a lot of the last couple teams Tennessee's faced, Texas A&M, Arkansas had a lot of first half success hitting the deep shots. Yeah. Uh, Vanderbilt opens that way and then that's it. It's never close after that. Tennessee just dominates because of their own three point shooting. Five th made three points, uh, three pointers last week against Arkansas. They hit 14 tonight and, and did a lot of that damage in the first half. Uh, I, I remember looking up at the at the scoreboard at one point during a media timeout. It's 35 to eight, and so yeah, a game that was just it just never really felt close. And and you got them both. I mean, Dalton Connect scores 14 points tonight, which is like his lowest you know scoring output since I can't remember when. You know, yeah, maybe Ole Miss. Yeah, I, I think that was the last time he was held the single digits yeah. over in the SEC opener. Exactly. So it's it's felt like a really long time since he scored 14, but they got the most out of you know the whole starting five everybody yeah. this whole starting five finishes in double fit scoring figures so and they just set the tone and it and it was just so out of you know out of reach by the second by halftime even before halftime but so yeah santiago vescovi which was really good for tennessee to see him kind of have this game tonight i think he finishes with 12 points uh for him to end it you know you know in that way kind of put the exclamation point in that first half with a three that just kind of told the story and that 14 point mark from, from three point land the most on the season for yeah. tennessee Shooting splits tell the story here. You also have to look at turnovers. 19 in the game for Vanderbilt. I think 13 of them came in the first half. Shooting from the field, though, in the first half, the Commodores, 33.3% from the field, 28% on three-pointers. Uh, sorry, that's that's their uh, game total. Uh, their first half total, 32% from the field, 23.1% on three-pointers. If you look at Tennessee, 52.6% from the field, 47.1% on three-pointers. You just look at that straight up, yeah. and, and it kind of tells a lot of that story. And the defense was a big part of it for Tennessee, held them the 21st half points. And there's an eight-minute stretch there in the middle where Vanderbilt hits one, one free throw and nothing from the field. Yeah. And, and that was really when, as you mentioned, you look at the media timeout <laughs> and, and you look at that score. How, how does that happen? That's yeah. how they, they just weren't able to knock down a shot against Tennessee tonight. You mentioned Dalton Connect has a, a decent game, uh, just does, isn't really used much, I, I guess. 22 minutes is, is a low usage rate for him, puts up 14 points. Well, he's joined by four others in double digits, and it's the starting five yeah. for Tennessee and Jonas Adu, Zakai Ziegler, Santiago Vescovi, and Josiah Jordan. James, what were your thoughts on the balance of scoring yeah. Tennessee was able to get tonight? I think what was good to see, and you know, we wrote this week about Jonas Adu and how Tennessee's ceiling heightens when he's playing the way that he is. You know, we kind of missed it in the last couple of weeks. He, he kind of regained that confidence at Arkansas with, with another double-double, I believe his seventh on the season. But in the Rocky Top form, you know, one of our subscribers said, I, I think that Josiah Jordan James is that guy that heightens the ceiling. So that was, and you, you see that tonight. I think uh, Tennessee something like 16 and one this season when Josiah Jordan James yeah. scoring double figures. And, and then obviously, like we mentioned, Santiago Vescovi, who's kind of had, you know, his, his slumps as well. Uh, playing a lot better lately and mention it in there. He said the team is confident in taking open, taking more open shots. I, I think that's something that I think even the veterans struggled with at some point this year. They're maybe a little timid to do that. It doesn't seem that way anymore. You know, you're, you're getting the most out of your veterans. And the last two games, Tennessee has shown a ton of balance. And I think here we are mid-February. Calendar is going to turn to March here in a couple of weeks. This is probably the perfect time to, to, to display that balance. And then on the flip side of that, 
you get all of your freshmen in the game outside of J.P. Estrella, who, who's still battling through injury. His second game missed. Uh, expect him back decently soon, but no for sure timetable right now as they, they kind of take things day by day and slowly. But you get the freshmen in Cade Phillips, Freddie, uh, Freddie Dilley on the fifth, and Cameron Carr in the game for a large stretch before they, they kind of get joined by the walk-ons, and, and that's how we end up with the final score. Who stood out to you among those freshmen? Who was the guy that, that you maybe saw the flashes in that he could be a big guy either later in this season or next year? I'd have to say Cameron Carr. I know that's kind of the easiest one yeah. because he did finish with eight points. But, you know, a guy that we've seen, you go back to that Kentucky game a few weeks ago, the, the impact he made there early. You saw that again today. He kind of sticks with the play at the other end, gets a steal, and then dishes an assist to, to Jonas Adu that leads to a score. Um, but a guy that, you know, at times we've seen miss some, some, some bad shots. But I, I think it was huge for him tonight to get a couple threes in there and, and also score on a layup, I believe. Yeah. Um, I think that'll pay dividends for him going forward. But one thing that Rick Barnes said I thought was interesting was, you know, at the beginning of the season, which you'd expect, that gap with the freshmen uh, was pretty wide. But Barnes says tonight it, it's closed a lot with those guys. And um, obviously with the score being the way it was, it's still an SEC game. You know, and those guys yeah. getting those minutes. Uh, I think it's going to be valuable with Rick Barnes and the Raiders as well. But I would say Cameron Carr stuck out the most, but all those guys, you know, just, just made the most of it. Like that Cameron Carr kind of joking about it in the post game presser about how he's never seen a shot that he doesn't like. Uh, he doesn't necessarily have the unlimited green light yeah. from Tennessee, but but he, he lets it fly. Yeah. And he's really confident in his shot, and that, that can be maybe something that's tough to, to toe the line on between confidence and just a bad shot, but Cameron Carr lacks no confidence yeah. out there on the offensive end. You mentioned the eight points from him, his final shooting line, three for seven from the field, two for four on three pointers. So a pretty solid game for him. He's had some ugly shots that, that stand out, but he also saw some go through today. So maybe he can build off of that. As he is a guy that Tennessee does like to sprinkle in a little bit. We saw it against Kentucky where he came up with a couple big plays through the lob of Josiah after creating that extra possession that he promised Rick Barnes. If he can start knocking down some open shots to go along with the potential he has on defense where there's still room to grow, but he's showing the ability to grow in that area and the ability to improve, he could be a piece that's relied on maybe a little bit down the stretch in the case of foul trouble, in the case of injury, and you don't feel too badly about it. And then, of course, he's got three years of eligibility after this year, so he could be a big piece in that regard as well. That'll do it all from us here in Knoxville, though. Tennessee baseball it's happening it's here <laughs> top of the fourth inning right now for tennessee against oklahoma uh as we record this oklahoma scores their first run of the game as i say that we have coverage of that game going on right now if you're watching this video right after it comes out if you're watching it on i guess sunday we'll have the recap of everything if you weren't able to watch it lady balls tomorrow at vanderbilt will be boots on the ground there football season never ending spring ball coming up really fast as well so make sure you head over to barreport.com for all of our written content it's not miss a thing links to everything you need is in the description thank you for watching